Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to do some more experimentation with the vacuum chamber over here. What I have here is a couple glasses, my scale, and I've got some uh, uh, cold water and some hot water if the temperature is down below. I did an infrared scan of these before. Now, what I want to do is I want to experiment with the principles of temperature in the um, uh, vacuum chamber. Uh, but before I do that, I need to get going on this while this water is still warm. So I took some warm tap water. And what I'm going to do is place this cup on the scale. And then I'm going to take the warm tap water and pour it in here until I come up to about 20... Well, okay, I'm going to accept 25. So I've got 25, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cold water and do the same. Okay, so I now have 25 and 25. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place both of these into the vacuum chamber as such. And let's move the scale out of the way. And let's bring the vacuum chamber over here so you can see it. So I've got uh, warm water in the front, cold water in the back. I'm going to move it over to the side here. Now I've got it on a silicone pad to insulate it from the bottom to keep it from becoming a heat sink. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the top on the vacuum chamber and uh, then clamp it down. Okay, so I'm going to now lower the camera and monitor the pressure gauge as I start to pull a vacuum. Welcome back to the bench. Uh, while we're pulling a vacuum on the water we put in the vacuum chamber, I want to share a little bit with you about the sort of the mechanics of the vacuum chamber and water and, and that kind of stuff as we talk about how we could use this best for dehydrating our filament. So one of the things that I'm doing is I'm pulling a vacuum. I'm going to pull a vacuum for seven minutes uh, on basically those two glasses of water I put in there, you know, um, each weighing 24 grams. Um, and I'm going to allow the vacuum to sit for 10 minutes. And what I want to do is, as you can kind of see off to the side, we're pulling a vacuum. Uh, you'll see the warmer water start bubbling uh, before the cold, which makes sense. And I'll talk about that a little bit in a second. But also, then what I'm going to do is go, once that finishes the seven minute cycle, I'm going to go to a time lapse of just watching the pressure gauge on the vacuum tank and and you'll see it rise and we'll talk about that in a second but what I've done is I've actually drawn out a little graph here because it's kind of interesting how this whole piece works uh, with vacuum and, and water so kind of a long story short the real magic and, and I'll do a quick overlay of a graph over here a complete graph and in this com in this table if you will it's more of a table than a graph you'll see how we go basically from atmospheric pressure down to uh, pulling uh, 30 inches of mercury and what happens because if you look to the far side it's in both centigrade and Fahrenheit at what temperature water will basically boil uh, and it'll actually boil under the freezing point uh, if you get down low enough in temperature. Now the interesting thing is uh, this vacuum system will pull to about the mid mid you know 29.5s, 29.6s um, in, in between 29 and 30 inches of mercury is where the magic happens really with water and so as you can see here in the graph and from the table um, you know at 29.32 uh, inches of mercury pulled, basically water will boil at about 64 degrees. Now this this scale is not drawn, uh, this graph is not drawn to scale is what I'm trying to say. Uh, because if we go all the way up to 29.8, which I mean is not far from 29.32, it'll boil at one degree Fahrenheit. So, uh, <laughs> you know, sub-freezing. Uh, but, you know, again, we're not seeing those type of pressures. The, the pressure gauge on this is a little hard to read. I'm guessing I'm pulling around 29.55, a little bit more than 29.5. Um, 
but even if we look at 29.62, uh, you know, water will boil at 45 degrees. So the more energetic the water is, the faster it's going to boil. But one of the things you've probably seen on the side here is that um, the warmer water gave up the ghost faster than the cold water. And now it did boil faster, but it seemed to stop boiling quicker because it gave up its heat. You know, it, it boiled away faster. And as it boiled away, it took away heat, lowering its temperature, meaning it takes more of a vacuum. And because it lowered its temperature faster, then the cold water means it quit boiling quicker. So kind of an interesting paradox with this. Now, one of the other pieces that you'll be noticing is when we're just letting it sit. So in other words, we ran the pump continually for seven minutes. And the reason I did that is to keep pulling the water out because as the water evaporates, its vapor replaces the vacuum in the chamber and, and raises the pressure. And this is what you're seeing on when, when I turn off the vacuum pump and, and seal the chamber, you'll see the pressure uh, decrease inside the chamber. That's the water vapor forming because now it's still somewhat boiling. It's still going through a phase change. It's not at a boiling state, but it's still a phase change where water is turning from a uh, liquid to a gas, basically. And, and, and filling the vacuum and that, that's why the vacuum is dropping. It's not because it's a leak in the container because I can pull a vacuum on that container and it basically sit overnight. Um, so that's really what we're seeing. So that's why I pulled it for seven minutes because I can get to a complete vacuum, uh, you know, about uh, 29.55 in, in say, you know, I don't know, uh, about two minutes. It pulls it rather quickly. But I wanted to keep taking the water out. Now, one of the things that you'll notice that now when we take the cups out of the vacuum chamber and we weigh them, uh, you'll notice we lost a gram from the warm water, but we lost really nothing, you know, maybe a half a gram, less than the resolution of the scale, on um, the cold water. So I think this is one of the more important things, as I've, I've sort of been mentioning. Uh, I think the filament itself or whatever body that you want to dehydrate that goes in the tank has to be warm. And the warmer it is, the better and faster that it will give up its water. Um, now, I'm going to run some, some tests in the future with desiccant because what I'm kind of concerned, not really concerned, but confused with is how def desiccant is going to be, uh, how effective it's going to be. Because, again, I, I'm almost thinking that, that as you're pulling a vacuum on the desiccant, it should be giving up its water, too. So why is it going to gain water in a vacuum? Um, you know, I mean, there's some logic to it that it may... But what is the convection going to be in the chamber to bring the water vapor into contact with the desiccant? So this is, this is going to be the next phase or the next series in this experiment is, is how, you know, does desiccant make a difference? So I'm going to get some desiccant in a future episode, put it in there, and then we're going to do some experiments with that. But one of the things that we do know is that if our filament is, is, is relatively warm, we can remove approximately a gram of water, which which is about, again, as I stated in the first episode, pretty much what everybody has come to say that a spool of nylon or PLA will hold. Uh, a couple people did some experiments where they weighed it and that's what they came up with. So this is kind of uh, empirically validating that that is possible. And again, I think this would be a very effective means um, if, you know, uh, because it's going to get the whole spool, you know. So if you're doing the, the, the uh, air dryer thing, how are you going to get the center of the spool? You know, eventually it's going to get in there. It's going to warm it up. But it's going to take hours and hours, and it's not going to be uniform. One of the pieces that I want to achieve here is a uniform dehydration of the filament. And I think this will achieve it. Now, I'm also thinking that... Um, a couple different things. Number one is heating up the container prior to the vacuum. Again, as I mentioned before, when you pull the vacuum, you know, there's no air in there transfer heat. Um, the, you know, the, the second piece is insulate it from the container itself. When I did my initial experiments, uh, the I found that the, the big metal container, the vacuum pot itself, when something was placed on it, acted as a heat sink and would draw the heat away from the object. And, and when I did the tests on the water, 
water boiled it down. This is one of the reasons I put that uh, silicone pad in the bottom of it to insulate it from the container itself. So I think something like that would work. So having it powered on while the unit's in a vacuum state, I don't think it's a value. But before that, you know, maybe letting it run for an hour, 15, I, you know, some period of time, you'd have to experiment to bring the filament up to some sort of temperature of, of roughly, you know, maybe 70 to 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit would probably be good because again if we're we're above 64 we know we can easily pull uh you know 2932 vacuum so if we're above 64 degrees we're good the more above 64 degrees the better we are because again remember as we pull the vacuum we're going to lose heat when the water evaporates so the temperature will drop fairly quickly so the more temperature we got the better off we are getting the water out of the filament um so hopefully you're finding this rather interesting. I know it's, this is getting a little technical, a little geeky maybe, but um, I, I do think this is interesting because I, I think it is the, one of the pieces that I'm seeing um, in, in a, some of the other 3D printing YouTubers out there have, have hit on this. Having dry filament really does improve the end quality surface finish of your prints no question about it so uh you know we're in winter months here in michigan right now my filament is pretty dry because you know it's dry in the house but i can definitely tell the difference between summertime and wintertime in the surface finish of my 3d prints and they're far better in the winter than they are in the summer so it's very clear that dehydrating the filament is a critical aspect so uh the other piece uh to watch for is i've come up with a housing a 3d printable housing for moisture control too uh, so keep an eye out for that i'll probably release that in a couple weeks i'm still still perfecting it a little bit uh, it's got a ways to go so but keep an eye out for it so anyways i want to wrap this video up it's kind of run long but lots of information so if you found it interesting hit the thumbs up button if you're doing something like this let me know in the comments below we'll have a third episode where we experiment with the desiccant and see how that works out swag shops up in the corner and we'll see you guys later cheers Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.